So the third property is depression in freezing point. Contrary to the boiling point, the freezing point decreases when a solute is added. So we can write delta Tf is equals to Tf0 minus Tf, where Tf0 is the freezing point of pure solvent and Tf is the freezing point when solute is added. Also, delta Tf is proportional to the molality of the solution similar to the boiling point. So, delta Tf is equals to Kf into M. Here, Kf is equals to freezing point depression constant or you can say cryoscopic constant. This expression leads to delta Tf is equals to Kf into W2 into 1000 divided by M1 into W1. The formula leads to the expression where del Tf is equals to W2, M2, W1 and M1 are now clear to you all. Kf is the cryoscopic constant and delta Tf is the expression for the depression in freezing point. So I hope now you all are clear with the three colligative properties that we discussed. We discussed relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point and depression in freezing point. Also we discussed the important expression present in each of this topic. So now we will move further to the fourth colligative property that is osmotic pressure. Before osmotic pressure, let's understand a term semi-permeable membrane. What is a semi-permeable membrane? If I put a semi-permeable membrane between a pure solvent and a solution, then only the minute solvent particles can pass through this semi-permeable membrane. Big solute particles are not allowed to pass through this semi-permeable membrane. Now you can see on the screen there is a beaker in which a solvent is added and in a funnel there is a solution. The funnel has semi-permeable membrane at its boundary. Now what happens is that the solvent molecules from the surrounding enters into the solution and the level of the solution rises in the funnel. So the process of movement of solvent particles through a semi-permeable membrane into the solution is known as osmosis. Now if we apply a particular pressure in this funnel then the movement of the solvent molecules can be stopped and this pressure is known as osmotic pressure. Now let us derive the equation for osmotic pressure. We can write osmotic pressure as pi is equals to CRT. Here C is the concentration, T is the temperature and R is the gas constant. Now further derivation lead to the formula M2 is equals to W2 into R into T divided by pi into V, where W2 is the weight of the solvent and M2 is the molar mass of the solvent. So here the topic osmotic pressure concludes. So this is all about osmosis and osmotic pressure and we also derive the expression for osmotic pressure. So we discussed osmotic pressure. It is the pressure which prevents the flow of solvent particles. But what happens in reverse osmosis? If this pressure continues and it goes on increasing, then osmosis takes place in the reverse direction. Now you can see this whole picture on the screen. So on the picture you can see that there is a semi-permeable membrane between salt water and fresh water. According to osmosis, what must happen? The water molecules should pass from this semi-permeable membrane from fresh water to the salt water. But if we apply pressure greater than the osmotic pressure, then this same process happens in the reverse direction. That means the water from the salt water will come out and it will cross the semi-permeable membrane to go to the fresh water. This process is known as reverse osmosis. So we saw that how the process of osmosis can be reversed by applying pressure greater than the osmotic pressure. Reverse osmosis is used in the desalination of C. Many polymers are also used in the reverse osmosis process for acting as a semi-permeable membrane. So this was all about reverse osmosis, osmosis and osmotic pressure.